Welcome back to my garden. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been talking about playing games and looking at it from a, I suppose, a child perspective and seeing what we might learn from that. But this week, I wanted to talk about a game that adults might play. It's an imaginary game, actually. Um, so this isn't going to be an episode about chess or football or something like that. Um, heaven knows I've spoken enough about those topics in the past. No, it's about, as I say, an imaginary game. And to set the scene, I need to go back to my university days when I was a, I suppose, fully paid up card carrying member of the... Um, society of pseudo-intellectuals. And needless to say, as one of those, um, well, I had my mini collection of Hermann Hesse novels on my bookshelf. Um, I read Siddhartha, Journey to the East, Nulp, Knulp, which I pronounce it, Ros Halder, very, very interesting writer, um, and that sort of intersection between philosophy and Eastern thought appealed to me then, and, and it does now. Of course, I never got round to reading his um, longer works. Hardly a surprise. I was a member of the pseudo-intellectual society. I wasn't actually a fully qualified, bona fide intellectual. So, Steppenwolf, things like that, no, never read it. I had a copy of the Glass Bead Game, but it has sat on my shelf for, I suppose, 35 years. Um, picked it up every now and then, and I never get around to reading it. Um, I read a few pages, I get the gist, I read the introduction, and now, of course, I've watched some videos on YouTube. So I know more or less what the book's about, but I haven't actually read the book. Maybe I will one day. Who knows? Um, well, what is the book all about? It's set in the uh, near future. It was written in the 1940s. So let's say the mid-2000s. Um, society changed somewhat. And the book is, is... Action takes place in a region, a place called Castilia, where these monks do two things, really. They are practitioners of the glass bead game and they also run a sort of boarding school for initiates in the glass bead game. The book never actually tells you explicitly what the glass bead game is. It's just a very refined esoteric game that links all human knowledge Science, art, literature, politics, philosophy, economics, you name it. It mixes it, it all together and somehow that knowledge uh, is manipulated within these, this imaginary game. But of course, these days, when I started doing a little bit of digging on the internet, it turns out that some... Um, modern-day uh, pioneers have attempted to make up their own versions of the glass bead game, sticking to uh, whatever hints are given in the book. Um, they interesting people who make very interesting videos. Uh, some of them are a little bit too far down the uh, theosophy line of thinking for my uh, taste. Others are philosophers. But interesting stuff all the same. Um, the easiest to explain version given on the internet goes kind of like this. And we'll imagine a two-player version. Um, and so you pick a topic uh, and a means of expression. Let us imagine in, in the video, let us imagine the topic is father. Um, each participant is going to express himself on this theme in whatever way they see fit. 
by means of a one minute monologue and then they take turns a sort of one minute talk batted backwards and forwards in an intellectual tennis scale the in ideally uh, the participants speak in a non-personal way so um the idea isn't to talk about their father and those sorts of anecdotes or experiences it is to speak generally of the concept father and one person is speaking the other is listening uh, intently um, trying to understand what the other participant is saying and and uh, building up um, responses to that which he can then deliver in his turn or simply move things forward again and they can bring in anything they like to the conversation as long as it is broadly speaking around the theme in this example of father or whatever idea you chose to make the centerpiece of your game and, and the purpose of this is to have a disciplined but totally free ranging conversation and uh, the guy doing the um the youtube clip that i saw says it's amazing how how many ideas are generated and points of departures spring out from the conversation uh another video spoke about it in um a much more uh, detailed sort of way and he kind of as reference began with a whiteboard with essentially categories of everything that he knew i suppose this could be a starting point and, and a different version of this game might be a one player version where you simply place all your pieces on your own glass bead game board uh, over time placing all your knowledge sort of a, a spider web of uh, intricate esoteric um, musings about absolutely everything that you know i was thinking about this this strange modern day reinterpretation of the glass bead game and it struck me uh very much in the spirit of what they were saying that if my topic was modern day glass bead games i would want to say doesn't this remind you of something that i've spoken about before isn't this a little bit like wait for it folks the zettel cast you know it's another way of generating large amounts of information that you connect waiting for surprising interesting illuminating uh, connections between seemingly disparate branches of knowledge and thought and i find that very enticing that um were herman hesse alive today that brilliant nobel prize winning uh, writer would look at zettelkasten and say my oh my this strikes a chord um and perhaps rather than thinking about zettelkasten as um a knowledge management system productivity age um, a way of gaming the system for people who would like to write some sort of non-fiction book perhaps we can think about it simply as a game that we might play uh, with the morsels of knowledge that that um, we've sucked up over the years and just enjoy it for sheer intellectual delight and it strikes me that could be actually quite an interesting um way of 
sort of operating in parallel with a, a more settled approach to absorbing what we read or listen to. And perhaps the way might be to play a little game with ourselves, you know, make yourself um, a pleasant drink, uh, put on some thought-provoking, instrumental, intellectually stimulating music, have a large piece of paper and start mind mapping literally everything you know. Um, start anywhere and go from there. Uh, sort of bubbles and, and think of the bubbles as, uh, as being kind of ideas or topics and then connect them with uh, these nodes, if we think of it in a mathematical, graph, theoretical sort of way, um, these nodes of knowledge, we connect with edges of uh, linking thoughts and just see what happens. Um, it won't happen immediately. It may be something that, that happens over a long, long period of time. But I think something interesting would happen. Perhaps we could play the game uh, involving more than one person, where we each sit down, we draw, a, uh, we have large pieces of paper, we draw little circles, nodes of knowledge, ideas, concepts, uh, categories, whatever, and we start linking them, and then at a predetermined time, we pass our paper on to the next person. The papers are shuffled around and then we add new bits of knowledge linking thoughts or ideas to one of our friends pieces of paper and in the end we put it all together and see what we've got um, all done in the spirit of play in the spirit of a game that was written about about 80 years ago uh, a game that doesn't actually exist, the rules were never made particularly clear, but I do believe has something interesting to tell us about how we might go about navigating things in our modern uh, overwhelming information age. And that is what this is all about. There is simply too much information out there. Uh, it is generated faster than we can absorb it. And I think many of us feel uh, overwhelmed with not just what's out there, but with what we know. And we are struggling to make sense of it. Um, and perhaps instead of taking it all terribly seriously, we simply need to play a game. Our glass beaker. That is uh, perhaps one of the more um, obscure chats in the garden that I've delivered. Uh, make of it what you will. Look forward to hearing your thoughts. And I do hope that uh, life is treating you well. Uh, you are filled with uh, abundant joy and that you're playing nicely. So until next week, from a sunny Brazil, ciao.